Hello everyone, this is the Archfiend, and I was going to do a little video about this last night, and of course from the title you can tell this is about Osama Bin Laden being killed by U.S. forces, and I was like, you know what, everyone and their mother is going to be making a video about this, giving their two cents, their opinions, whether we did is right or wrong, and all that other good shit, so I was like, you know, I'm just going to let everyone else, you know, do that. But, two things happened today. Number one... I listened to a lot of news broadcasts, both on TV and radio, and two, my inbox exploded with requests from you guys asking to hear my two cents of the story, so I'm going to tell you about things, and I'm actually kind of glad I didn't make a video last night about this because a lot of stuff that I heard and saw today is stuff that I just want to react upon. I'm glad I took an extra day just to, you know, soak everything in and uh, make a few more conclusions about stuff that's happening here. So we're going to go through quite the gamut of things here and I uh, hope to keep this video under an hour, but there's no guarantees on that. Anyways, um, Osama Bin Laden has been killed. Um, it's certain, there's pictures, there's DNA evidence. On top of that, um, I know there's going to be conspiracy theories that come out and say, oh, it's so convenient that America buried him at sea, now there's no proof that he's dead, and America's just telling us that he's dead, and they're holding him captive, or he's not dead, he's still in a cave, and all this other shit. Um, believe whatever you want as far as that propaganda and all that bullshit rhetoric is going to be spewing out the ass over the next days, weeks, months, and years on end. Um, I am of the certainty that he is dead. Um, if he isn't dead, uh, <laughs> Barack Obama would be taking a hell of a risk of him being exposed as to being still alive. All that aside, the guy's dead. He was killed by a Delta Force strike. I'm going to refer to it as a Delta Force strike because I don't know if they've specifically said if it was a Navy SEAL or any specific branch of the military. So I'm just going to refer to it as a Delta Force strike from here on out. Um, a bunch of very highly trained American servicemen in this Delta Force attack went into Pakistan and through intelligence that was gathered, through whatever's being leaked right now, saying that people in Guantanamo Bay tipped off American officials and they felt strong enough to go into this foreign nation, Pakistan, that we did not get approval to run this attack. We went into that nation, a sovereign nation, and just went in there, clean proverbial shop, and killed Osama and just everyone else that was in the house, and, you know, all's good in the hood. Now, Barack Obama is getting a lot of credit for this, as he should. It was his decision to do this. He was the one that gave the ultimate authorization that said, you know, Delta Force, you have the green light to go on this. We're going to trust the intel on this. We're pretty certain that he's there. Go ahead and do it. So they went in there, did their little raid, and they, you know, took Osama's body out with him. Um, <laughs> on a little minor side note, I find it kind of, um, I don't, I don't want to say funny, but unique, that Osama had a female human shield in the room with him who was also killed. Um, just a very, very great act of a brave man right there. Anyways, um, so America went into Pakistan um, under the cover of night and just, you know, raided this compound, this million dollar compound that apparently Pakistan had no idea that Osama Bin Laden was living in there. I mean, why would you? Um, I'm going to delve into that a little bit later here. Um, <laughs> okay, so Osama Bin Laden is getting a lot of credit for this, and like I said before, he should. Now... I was listening to talk radio today, specifically Rush Limbaugh, and I was just kind of just, just to use a completely ridiculous word, flabbergasted as to the, the sharing of credit and who should get credit for this. And a lot of people, at least a lot of the people that I've heard from that are staunch hardline Republicans, are saying a lot of the responsibility for this operation lies with the George Bush regime, the previous regime that was, you know, hard at work for seven years 
um, in George Bush's reign of supremacy here after 9-11, and all those steps taken were what ultimately led to and carried over into Barack Obama's regime here and led to the death of Osama bin Laden. Why, why does this matter at this point? That's what I don't understand. Like, can we just argue about that another day? And just the, the, the one thing that Republicans can't stand right now, they can't swallow, they can't swallow that proverbial pill that is Barack Obama is throughout history going to get credit for finding and killing Osama bin Laden. And right off the bat, people want to taint that. Yes, everything that George Bush did to help implement the plans of the CIA, um, the wiretapping, the interrogating of people in Guantanamo Bay, a lot of that information helped get the conclusion that was yesterday's finding and killing of Osama bin Laden. But if his plan was so great and was just so, you know, just the typical hawk mentality of just, you know, find and kill, sick our military on them. If that plan was so goddamn good, seven years he had after 9-11 to get the job done, he didn't get the job done. Barack Obama and his group got the job done. Let's just cut the shit and stop trying to taint this and start bickering back and forth over whether well, Republicans deserve so much more credit because George Bush implemented these plans and Barack Obama, thank God he at least carried through with what George Bush wanted to get done. Stop. Silence. Obama's getting credit for this. Deal with it. Now, there's a lot of talk about celebrating someone's death here, even though he's a vile, putrid, hated man worldwide, except for the people that sympathize with him, of course. People are talking about how, you know, why, why can we celebrate his death? He's, you know, he's a human being. Yeah, he did bad things, but this is a human life that was taken. And... I would say his rights of being respected as a human being went out the window a long time ago. When you devise, develop, implement, and carry out, maybe not firsthand, but through your finances, through your know-how, through your words, through whatever you have at your disposal other than you physically picking up a gun or flying a plane yourself into a building, when you implement all those things that lead to the deaths of thousands of innocent lives, men, women, children, when you start doing that, then the respect that you want for anyone feeling sorry for you should really go out the window if you expect us to feel sorry for you that you are killed. And then there's the talk of some people saying, why celebrate this? There's just going to be someone to replace him. And on top of that, killing him just turns him into a martyr for the cause. We have killed an evil man that is the head of a very radical group. If they were pissed before, they sure as hell are going to be pissed now. And you know what? They probably are. They're probably pissed off their little rockers right now. But I ask you this. Are they any more pissed than they were before? I mean, did they like us in any possible way? Did they like anyone in the free world? I mean... They were carrying out bombings in England, in Spain. Those people basically got bombed for being sympathetic to America or just, you know, giving some troops here and there for America's war. I mean, what else could they or could they not have done? I mean, they're going to carry out attacks. And this is what I want to tell the people that are celebrating this. The one criticism I want to give to the people that are celebrating this as a great, expansing victory throughout the realm is we really didn't win anything. Nothing was won. The war on terrorism is not over. Al-Qaeda isn't going to go, oh, well, shit, we're done. Leader's dead. 
Game over. No more quarters left to put in the machine. It's over. That's not the case. No matter what, another attack is going to come in America, in Europe, in anywhere. These people hate us. Period. Radical fundamentalism, acts of terrorism are going to be carried out. Whether Osama bin Laden died yesterday or lived on many years from now and died of old age, he probably would have still be turned into a martyr if he died of natural causes. He was pretty much on his way to that happening anyway. So the people that are just, you know, the fundamentalist assholes that rally behind Osama bin Laden, they're going to do their thing no matter what. I mean, what do, you, what do you think? They were like, um, they're like in a possession of a nuke right now, and they're like, oh, well, you know what? We're not going to use it on America because, I mean, they're not really that bad. And then they heard Osama bin Laden got killed, and they're like, oh, you know what? Screw that. We're nuking America now. No. If they had something like a nuke and they had the ability to get it over here and detonate it somewhere within America's borders, they would do it. Period. They don't need the motivation of their figurehead being killed. Now, going back to the point of celebrating this, I have no problem. I have no problem with anyone celebrating this. Do you know why? When I see those pictures in New York City of the people celebrating at Ground Zero, I say, you know what? They deserve that. They deserve that for all the pain and suffering that they went through on 9-11. If they want to party it up for a few nights here, let them. It was their neighbors, their family members, a lot of our family members, friends, relatives that were killed on 9-11. If those people want to party it up and see this as a victory for the mastermind that made their lives completely miserable, let them. If people want to get more patriotic for America about it, let them. Again, I'm not saying this is some just big rubber stamp victory across the board of terrorism. But man, if it makes a few people happy that have been completely miserable because of the actions that this guy carried out, then God bless America. Now, oh boy. Pakistan. <laughs> this is why I am so glad I did not make a video about this yesterday because boy the facts that are coming out and who knows maybe tomorrow or the next day I'm gonna make a want to make another video about this. Pakistan. A nuclear power. A rather civilized world as far as that specific region of the world goes. They harbored this man. Maybe not with stone cold proof but in a town in Pakistan that was about, I think it was like a mile or two from a military training facility, um, it was like a facility similar to the West Point in the, in the United States, Osama bin Laden had a million dollar compound. You know, it was fortified with a wall, an inner wall. Um, it kind of stood out like a sore thumb in this town. Like if you looked at this town and you said, where do you think Osama would be? Well, obviously it's in that house. It's that big house with the big wall around it. He would obviously be there, right? Sure enough, that's where he was. And he was there, and the ISI didn't know about this. The ISI is the security force in Pakistan. Um, folks, I don't know if you know this, but America donates, well not donates, they willingly give countries like Pakistan billions of dollars to help fund their war against terrorism. Are we to seriously believe that Pakistan just had no idea the most wanted man in the world was living in their literal backyard in a guarded compound and they had no idea about it? Pakistan seems to have the dirt on everyone in their country because that ISI seems to be pretty much on the ball on anything they need to know about or want to know about. But Osama bin Laden literally living in their backyard? They didn't know about that? Pakistan, do you got anything you want to tell us now? I mean, it's, it's really time that we just stop funding nations like this. I'm sorry, but the, the times of us saying, okay, we're willingly going to help you. We're going to help you find terrorists. We won't let our troops in your country. Well, guess what? 
We're coming in whether you want us to or not. And that's one of the things that I give Barack Obama the most credit for. Yes, he went into a sovereign nation without their approval and carried out a tactical strike with a Delta Force under the operations of American Joint Services. But, man, if you're going to hide someone like a little Easter egg in a fortress and be like, well, you know what, if, if we find the egg, we'll hand them over to you. No, 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 no. That's why America carried out an act like they did yesterday. The days of just letting people conduct their own business where they're not willing to play ball with us, then I'm sorry, we're going to take the bat and the ball and we're going to come to your yard to play. And whether you want us there or not, we're going to do it. Now, that may sound a bit imperialistic to say something like that, but when it comes to just going in and getting one person, it's like not like we were going in to liberate the entire country of Pakistan and take it over. We said, fine, we know where he is. Guess what? We're coming in. Oh, by the way, we're not knocking along the way. Yes, I know this video is getting ridiculously long. Oh, boy, what the hell else did I want to talk about? Man, this is where I wish I had, like, notes and had a monitor or something to look at. Uh, a lot of interesting things came out from this. Um, like I said, the people that are happy about this, let them be happy. The Republicans that can't deal with this, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to deal with the fact that history is going to forever remember Barack Obama. And again, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever said this, but I am far from a supporter of Barack Obama. If you ask me to list the great things he's done as president, this is how long the list would be. Do you need me to repeat the list? Because I just said it. Anyways, um, <sighs> Barack had balls to do what he did, and um, you know a lot of things might be set up from you know George W.'s reign before him, and. <sighs> The other shoe is going to drop here. I guess that's kind of what I want to end things on here. Um, a, a, another attack is going to come. And people really need to just not be complacent. And I know a lot of criticism may come with saying, um, well, it took nine and a half years after 9-11 to find Osama bin Laden. And that is kind of worrying because if a country like America and a lot of other nations were looking for this guy and it took almost 10 years to find them and upwards of a trillion dollars worth of resources. That is kind of iffy. And I mean, you gotta wonder what the hell really happened? Were we saving this for this specific date and time? Like we had him tagged and you know, we just knew where he was and we we're just gonna come in and get him eventually and this was the prime opportunity to do so? I don't know, maybe something like that is an option. And um, another thing that I wanna say and I guess this is what I'll finally end this on. Jesus Christ, Archfiend, shut up already. The one thing, and a lot of people say, well, there's just another guy that's going to take his place. I would like to hold people to that notion because I would like to see who the hell is going to step up and say, I am the leader of Al-Qaeda. Do you seriously want to be seen as the top dog of that organization? and be knowing that even if I live in a country like Pakistan that is saying, no, we do not want American forces in our country, even if you're in a, a country like that, that America is going to come in anyway to get your ass, do you think anyone is going to want to be the figurehead of any terrorist regime that wants to declare war against America now? That is what I see as a victory out of this. I would love to see someone have the balls to step up and say, screw you, America, we're at war with you, come get me. Then he'll probably get hit by a missile by the time his camera turns off. So, I think that's a victory. I think that no one's going to have the balls to step up and say they are the leader of Al-Qaeda right now. If they do, um, I would like to see how long they last because I'd like to see anyone that has as much resources behind them as Osama bin Laden had. I mean, this guy successfully stayed hidden for almost an entire decade worth of time. So, that'd be interesting. I'm, um, I'm curious to see how that plays out. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about here. Let me see, uh, George Bush, Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much everything I wanted to say here, so... 
I don't know. What do you guys think about this? Um, are you happy? Are you sad about this? Um, this sounds like a stupid comment question of the day. Don't worry, you don't have to answer these. But it's definitely causing a lot of buzz. And, you know, when I look at my inbox, I see you guys asking me for my opinions about this more than anything I've seen you guys ask me about my opinion on. And I see just a number of people I'm subscribed to making videos about this. There's a definite buzz of discussion that is wanted about this because a lot of people are concerned about what this may do and a lot of people are happy about what this has done and a lot of people are just unsure of everything in between. So discussion is healthy for this. This is very serious shit. And again, <laughs> People that are getting complacent about this and seeing this as a grand victory need to take their proverbial heads out of their proverbial asses because bad stuff is going to happen no matter what happened yesterday. And in, frankly, it's been too quiet for too long. So, be curious to see what happens. I just, I just hope for God's sakes that it's not a nuclear attack. But, I mean, what else left is there? I mean... It's just nothing that could be bigger in my that I could think of in my mind that's greater in scheme and just total destruction than 9/11, other than a nuclear attack, and uh, that's one of the things that scares me. And that's something that you pretty much have just you know shut up the creek, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Jesus Christ, I hope it never happens. But America seems to be taking care of business abroad. And on a final note, on a final final note, get the goddamn troops out of Pakistan. Why are they still there? I said Pakistan. Afghanistan. Damn it. I made it all the way through the video without making an error and I make one at the very end. Get the troops out of Afghanistan. Why are they even there now? Bring them home. On that note, I'm not going to take a chance to mess up anymore. Get the troops out of Afghanistan. That proverbial war on finding Osama and an Al-Qaeda, it's done. Let Afghanistan try and govern themselves now and, you know, apologize for leveling a lot of their towns on the way to the end here. Um, Jesus Christ, this was quite possibly one of the longest videos I've ever made, and I hope you guys are still awake. Got nothing left to say. Go Flyers. That is all.